Mr. District Attorney, starring David Bryan. Mr. District Attorney, champion of the people, defender of truth, guardian of our fundamental rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And it shall be my duty as district attorney not only to prosecute to the limit of the law all persons accused of crimes perpetrated within this county, but to defend with equal vigor the rights and privileges of all its citizens. This is David Bryan. In a moment, we'll bring you another case from the files of Mr. District Attorney. But first, a word from our sponsor. And now, here is our star, David Bryan, as Paul Garrett, Mr. District Attorney. It has long been recognized that crime constitutes a disease in the bloodstream of democracy. A disease so serious that it can even threaten the life of a nation. Unless it is fought fearlessly at every turn, crime can build into itself an organization of such magnitude that it could conceivably put a stranglehold on our very way of life. On this particular morning, I was in my office, carefully going over a series of reports. They all pointed in one direction. A serious crime wave was sweeping across our city. A crime wave that undoubtedly had behind it a well-organized criminal group. What is it, Miss Miller? Phone call for you, Mr. Garrett. Tom Carter. The Daily Clarion reporter? Yes, he says it's extremely important that he talk to you. I see. Put him on, please. Hello, this is the district attorney. Mr. Garrett, I'm sure glad I caught you in. This will knock you right out from under your hat. I'm just about certain I know who Mr. Big is. Mr. Big? Yeah, Mr. Big. Believe it or not, Mr. Garrett. The big wheel of the mob. <laughs> Carter. Carter. What happened? Venus. The Venus. <laughs> Carter. Carter, can you hear me? Carter. Well, it's no use. Miss Miller. Yes, Mr. Garrett? Please have this call traced immediately and advise homicide. Homicide? Oh, and Miss Miller. Yes, Mr. Garrett? Get hold of Harrington and have him follow through on this. I'm going to the office of the Daily Clarion and see what I can find. All right, Mr. Garrett. Come right in, Mr. Garrett. The receptionist told me you were coming up. Well, we feel quite honored to have the district attorney pay us a visit. Well, this isn't exactly a visit, Mr. Harris. I'm after a little information. I'll be glad to help. Your newspaper has been conducting what you call a crime expose. I'd like some details as to the assignment of your reporter, Tom Carter. Afraid I can't help you much on that, Mr. Garrett. You see, my city editor handles all the actual assignments. I'll get Walker in here. Herb, could you come into my office for a minute? Good. Walker will be right here. He knows everything about our operation. I see. Uh, Mr. Harris, does the name Venus mean anything to you? Venus? No, nothing more than the famous statue. I'm afraid that's not the one. Oh, come on in, Herb. You know Mr. Garrett, our district attorney? How are you, Mr. Garrett? Glad to meet you, Mr. Walker. Herb? The district attorney wants to know about Carter's work on the crime expose. Well, Carter was put on roving assignment. We gave him a free hand. Tom wants it that way because of his underworld contacts. So you wouldn't know where Carter might be working right now? No, afraid not. Come in. Harrington. Hiya, Chief. Miss Miller told me you were here. Mr. Harris, Mr. Walker, this is Len Harrington, my assistant. Oh, yeah. Harrington. Oh, Chief, uh, I have some news that I... Uh... Well, that's all right, Harrington. You can talk. 
Well, they found Carter's body. He was shot in the back. Dead. What? Tom Carter killed? Where did it happen? A phone booth back of a service station uptown. No witnesses. Oh, Tom Carter killed. I can't believe it. I was afraid this had happened. That's why I came here. We've got to put a stop to this terror, gentlemen, and soon. Mr. Walker, perhaps Carter's last expense account could give us a lead as to where he was working. Oh, that's very possible. I can let you see the records. Come with me, gentlemen. Mr. Harris is very upset. This is an awful blow. Carter was our top reporter. Now, here's the accounting office. Come right in. Ah, this is the current expense ledger. Let's see. Yeah. Ah, here it is. Here's Carter's accounts. Oh, thanks. Oh, Harrington, write down some of these places. Yeah, sure, Chief. Hey, Club 7-Eleven seems to be a favorite hangout of Carter's. He was certainly there often enough in the past two weeks. That's Harry Harry Trigo's joint, isn't it? Yes. I'll drop down to the Club 7-Eleven. Okay, Chief. Well, thanks for your cooperation, Mr. Walker. Glad to be of help. Any help I can. Hey, you. You, Dippy. Hi, George. How are you? Get going. We don't want no cheap dips grabbing our customers' wallets. Uh, not George. I ain't working tonight. Out, you crumb, before I bust your hat. Now, listen, George. I don't mean to interrupt this party, but are you George? Yeah, that's me. What are you after? The man up front told me you'd take me to Mr. Trigo's office. Yeah? Who are you? I'm the district attorney. <coughs> Would you show me to Mr. Trigo's office? Yeah, follow me. There. It's me, boss. The DA's here. Where's to talk to you? The DA. I'll be right there. <coughs> well, Mr. Garrett, this is a real occasion. Well, hardly that. Can we talk inside? Sure, why not? Okay, George, wait outside. What's on your mind, DA? Some information. What can you tell me about Tom Carter? Carter? What am I supposed to know about him? You spent a lot of time around here the past week. So what? I can't help who comes into my place. I see. Hmm, this picture. A very attractive girl. Huh? Just one of the dolls who worked in the club a while back. Loretta Nelson builds herself as the blonde Venus. Why are you so interested in her? Because Tom Carter knew a Venus, too. Where can I find her? Oh, last I heard, she was staying at the uh, Stanley Hotel. That's all I know. In that case, that's all for now. I hope you find it, D.A. Come on in, George. So long, D.A. Goodbye. Everything all right, boys? <laughs> yeah, sure, everything's just Jim Dandy. <laughs> you can come out of the closet now, Venus. Harry, Harry, believe me, I, I didn't tell that reporter anything. I swear it. I know. George... Yeah. Make a talk. Some truth. Please, Harry, keep him away. You gotta believe me. You heard the boss. That'll be enough of that, George. DA again, huh? I didn't go very far, Trigo. You see, there was a strong smell of perfume in here, and my hunch was you had a hidden visitor. Now, young lady, she's gone. <laughs> she took off like a scared rabbit. I couldn't stop her. I'll talk to you later. Talk to you a minute, D.A. Oh, Dippy. Say, did you see a girl run out of here? To Venus? Sure, she was in a big hurry. Grabbed a taxi and scrammed. Thanks. Oh, but, but, but D.A., I gotta tell you something. Later, Dippy. No. This can't wait. I, I found a wallet. I, I, I happened to find this wallet, see? All right, all right. So you found a wallet. Honest, it's the truth. I found it. And there was this note in it. I, I didn't know what to do. Well, let me see that. 
Your newspaper better lay off or the undertaker will lay you out. No signature, of course. What else, Dippy? It was in his envelope. It wasn't even open when I... When I read it, I, I, I felt pretty bad. I, I figured the guy didn't even have a chance. Give me the envelope. Addressed to Herbert Walker, city editor, Daily Clarion. You, you gotta believe me, D.A. I, I found the wallet. For your sake, I hope so, Dippy. Garrett, come in. Sorry to disturb you at home, Mr. Walker. Oh, it's perfectly all right. Oh, Mr. Harris is in the next room. Good. I want to talk to him also. We were working late at the office. Special edition on Tom's murder. I got a bit of a migraine headache, so Mr. Harris drove me home in my car. We figured we could finish up here. Well, I hate to bother you, but this may be important. Ever seen this letter before? Let's see. Yes, it was lying on my desk. You didn't read it? No, no, I got busy, stuck it in my wallet. Why? Please read it now. Of course. Your newspaper better lay off. Or... Oh, hello, Mr. Garrett. Good evening, Mr. Harris. I didn't hear you come in. Say, Herb, what happened? You're so pale. Just another touch of migraine, I saw. He's always getting them. I've told you, Herb, you're working too hard. Well, we've got more important things than my headache to worry about. Can we help you in any way, Mr. Garrett? Well, it would be a big help if I could see the last stories Carter wrote on the crime expose. Would you have them? Well, in this case, yes. They're on my desk at the office. Well, I'd like to see them. All right. I'll go down and get them. Ooh. That headache again? Yeah. Come up rather sharp. This tragic business with Tom hasn't helped it any either. Look, you just stay put, her. I'll take your car and get those stories for the district attorney. Well, I can drive you down. No, no, you stay with Herb. Make him relax. Well, Herb, give me the keys to your car. Oh, yeah. Here they are. I'm sorry about this. Just take it easy. I'll be right back. How's the head, Mr. Walker? Anything I can get you? Uh, it's easing up. Comes and goes. I'm afraid these hoodlums mean business. So do I, Mr. Garrett. That's why I carry this gun. Well, that sounded like an explosion. An explosion? Mr. Garrett, look out the window. The car! Blowing to bits. A bomb on the starter. A bomb? Mr. Harris? He didn't have a chance. Operator, this is the district attorney. Get me the police. Immediately. For me. That bomb was meant for me. Now I've got two deaths to avenge. This is David Bryan. Before we continue with Mr. District Attorney in the case of the dead reporter, here is an important message from our sponsor. And now, back to David Bryan, starring as Paul Garrett, Mr. District Attorney. It can be a very frightening thing to see the ruthless force of organized crime at work. As District Attorney, it was my sworn duty to follow through on every lead, no matter how thin, to put a stop to the unleashed terror. I had to find the Mr. Big of the criminal gang and find him quickly. I assigned Harrington to do a must job of locating the whereabouts of Dippy, the pickpocket, who might have information I needed. And I desperately wanted to talk to the Venus. But she had moved away from her apartment without notice. And this is the district attorney. Mr. Garrett, I know where the Venus is. Good. Great work. A hairdresser she goes to gave me the information. The Venus moved in with a girlfriend. The Lido Arms Apartments on Sylvania Street. Fine. I'll meet you there. In front of the apartment, Miss Miller. Wait for me there. I'm on my way. You got 
out here in a hurry, Mr. Garrett. Time's not on our side in this case, Miss Miller. Which apartment is the Venus in? I'm sure it's 126 on the ground floor. Let's go. She may not be here. Oh, we'll hope for the best. Well, this is it. 126. It's open, dear. Come in. I'm on the phone. Be right with you. Oh. Oh, it's you, Mr. Garrett. Um, oh, honey, I have visitors. I'll call you back. Very neat, Venus. I'm sure the person you were talking to on the phone got the idea. Huh? What idea? He or she is now well aware that Miss Miller and I just entered your room. Oh, it was nothing like that. I was just talking to a girlfriend. That's all. If you say so. I have a compact here. It's engraved with the words, To my Venus with love. It's yours, isn't it? Well, well, yeah, it looks like mine. Where'd you find it? Where did you lose it? Well, well, you know how it is. A girl leaves these things in lots of places. You understand, don't you, don't you, Miss Miller? Yes, I certainly know how compacts can be misplaced. Ordinarily, yes. But it might be very awkward to explain how a compact came to be found in the wreckage of a bomb car in which a newspaper publisher was murdered. What? You found my compact in a bomb car? Exactly. How did it get there, Miss Nelson? I don't know. I don't know. I think you know a lot more than you're telling. I want some answers about Tom Carter. Poor Tom. He was... He was so nice, so friendly. I liked him very much. But I told him he was going to get in trouble. And what about the name of the man behind the crime syndicate? Who is it? I don't know, I tell you. Tom asked me to keep an eye on Trigo at the club. Trigo and I have been going together for almost a year. I'm sorry, but I have to know. What happened to them? I... Well, I was sure Trigo was mixed up with his crime syndicate. One day I saw he had a letter. It was addressed to someone at the Daily Clarion. I told Tom. Well? Well, that's all. That's all I know. Please. Please, no more questions. I'm so fr- frightened. Take it easy, Mr. I'll answer that. Hello. Chief, so you're still there, huh? Seems that way, Harrington. What's up? I finally located Dippy's hideout. You still want him? Yes, but I think I'd better get over there and talk to him. Where's the place? It's a shack down on Front Street, just off Terminal. Should I wait for you? I'll meet you there, Harrington. Any news? Harrington's located Dippy. I'm going there. Me too? No, you stay with her. I'll check with you the first chance I get. All right, Mr. Garrett. See you soon. Hey, uh, Chief, right over there. That's the shack Dippy uses to hole up in. Mm, there's no light inside. He might be asleep. Door's open. What? What's that? Sounds like a moan. Come on. You got your flash? Yeah. And it works, too. Over there, behind the bed. It's Dippy. Shot bad. Dippy. Dippy, can you hear me? Who did it? Who shot you? I didn't see no light. I heard a cough. Dippy, you heard a cough? Cough. To the dark. That's that, Chief. Poor Dippy. You got caught in somebody else's dirty game. All right, Harrington, let's go. I think we're very close to finishing up the job Tom Carter started. I want to get to Trigo's private office without being announced, Harrington. How, Chief? The guy with the fishtails is already looking at us. Talk to him about anything. Table reservation, inspect the kitchen, anything. I'll slide around. 
You come on back to Trigo's office as soon as you can work it. Shall do. Here I go. Mr. Garrett, the district attorney. What are you doing back here again? You mind if I step inside? What for? Trigo ain't here. And you and I will talk. Inside. <laughs> Look, D.A., you better go. I don't want no trouble. It's too late for that. You've already got trouble. The kind of trouble that ends up in the electric chair. Electric chair? <laughs> what are you talking about? Who are you trying to scare? Dippy's dead. Shot to death in the dark. But he lived long enough to point the finger right at you, George. At me? Come on, talk. No, I ain't talking. This gun, it'll do the talking right now. Oh! I almost got here too late, Chief. Just in time, Harrington. Shut the door. Now. How is he? He'll be all right. I aim for the shoulder. Obviously, we're not going to get any information out of George for some time. Trigo's our man now. Where is he? Oh, that's a good question, Harrington. You better call the ambulance for George. Right. Oh, Mr. Garrett, I'm glad you're here. Mr. Walker. I've been looking all over for you. Here, take a look at this. It's Tom Carter's last story. A million-dollar question. Who is the brains behind the unholy gang of mobsters trying to run our city? A million-dollar answer. Perhaps a certain nightclub operator would come up with it if he could be persuaded to give an interview at his cabin hideaway at North Cove on Lake Pinewood. Yes, this is something, Walker. Where did you get it? I played a hunch. Practically tore Carter's desk apart. This was hidden under a drawer. I'm going to get that interview, Mr. Garrett. If I have to ram this gun of mine right down Trigo's throat. Well, that won't be necessary, Mr. Walker. Put it away. Harrington, uh, Walker and I will start out. You get hold of an officer to take charge of George and then meet us up at the edge of North Cove. We'll go to Trigo's cabin together. Okay, Chief, but be sure to wait for me. That's a pretty fancy cabin Trigo's got. The head man of the crime gang can afford a hundred like that. Hold up. The light just went out. Why are we stopping? Just taking it easy, Walker. This Trigo can be dangerous. So can I with this gun. Somebody's on the porch, Chief. Watch out. Don't shoot, Walker. I see the flash. Walker, stop it. Hey, Chief, you all right? It's the Venus. Come on. You killed him. You killed Harry. You murderers. It's Trigo, all right. How is he, Harrington? Pretty dead, Chief. Well, Mr. Garrett, I, I lost my head. But I, I never dreamed it. That range, I, I just shot in self-defense. Sure, Mr. Walker. You killed the one man I loved, my sweetheart. He's dead, and, and all we wanted was to get away together. All right, Venus. You can turn it off now. Well, haven't you got any heart? Yes, and eyes, too. You shot Trigo yourself, Miss Nelson. I... I shot him. I saw the angle of the first flash. And Walker could never in the world have shot him from there. But, Chief, Trigo was her sweetheart. Oh, no, Harrington. Mr. Walker, he's her man. Me? Well, this is utterly ridiculous. I was pretty certain when we found Miss Nelson's compact in your blown-up car. It had probably slipped behind the seat long before the bombing. You're crazy. I led you up here to get Trigo. And eat double cross. Miss Nelson waits here with Trigo. You bring me here with a phony story, supposedly from Carter. They're shooting in the dark while the Venus kills Trigo so we can have our patsy and set you up with a case of self-defense. It's a lie. It's all lies. Look, Garrett, you can't make that story stick. I think I can, Mr. Big, of the crime syndicate. Why, you... Grab his gun, Harrington. It's grab, Chief. So is Mr. Big. You too, Venus. Just stay where you are. Oh, I should never have listened to him. He said Trigger was just in the way. He'd be our fall guy. We'd have it all to us. Shut up! The rats are leaving the ship, Chief. Oh, no, Harrington. 
They've gone down with it. I just wish one thing. What's that, Chief? That Tom Carter were alive to write this story. This is David Bryan again. I hope you've enjoyed this case from the file of Mr. District Attorney. I'll be back in just a moment after this message from our sponsor. Now, here is the star of Mr. District Attorney, David Bryan, with a word about the program you have just heard. Every case of crime that comes to my office is important, but this one had special significance. Here was a vicious group of criminals masterminded by a man in a position of great influence. Herbert Walker, Mr. Big, planned to use a newspaper as a force for evil. Well, the people heard the truth about Walker, about the Venus, and about George. And, as always, the people made their decision and ended the career of these hoodlums. And now this is David Bryan inviting you to join us when we present our next case based on the facts of crime from the file of Mr. District Attorney. Mr. District Attorney was originated by Phillips H. Lord.